Hey Jules Plus Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those of you who are new, I know you can benefit. People I am busy procrastinating and you are part of it. Aren't you so happy? <laughs> there are a few things I've mastered in this lifetime. Procrastination is one of them. I don't want to brag, but yeah, I'm really good at it. My husband right now would just be, what are you doing with your JBV when you've got lesson plans due? You didn't finish your report cards. Hey, I did the dishes. I have the laundry going. I've got a lot of good things going. And this article is about procrastination. So I feel like I'm actually helping myself. Okay. That's how I do it, people. That's how I justify it. <laughs> <laughs> that and pulling all-nighters, which I don't want to do. I'd like to say, well, I used to pull all-nighters when I was young. Uh, young being 50, 52, when I was still finishing my master's degree. <laughs> it's not my best idea ever. But this might be the solution. If you go up into my little search engine and you put in procrastination, a ton of videos will come up. If you put in goal setting, a ton of videos will come up. Um, you know, but I still haven't mastered it. But, you know, I'm breathing. There's hope. Let's see if this works. It says the real reasons you procrastinate and how to stop. More importantly, how to stop from Washington Post. Let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so it says, have you ever sat down to complete an important task and then suddenly discovered that you were uploading the dishwasher or engrossed in the Wikipedia entry about Chernobyl? Or perhaps you suddenly realized that the dog needs to be fed, emails need to be answered, your ceiling fan needs dusting, or maybe you should go ahead and have lunch even though it's only 11 a.m. <laughs> I'm guilty of all of the above. And then my dude will be like, what are you doing, Julie? You're doing everything but what you need to do. And to be fair, all those things need to be done too, but like in what order, right? I so get it. Okay, so next thing you know, it's the end of the day and your important task remains unfinished. Now, that's not my case. I'm one of those people who will stay up and pretend that I've been asleep when I just laid down five minutes before the alarm to get the job done. But it's not in my best interest. So let's keep learning. For many people, procrastination is a strong and mysterious force that keeps them from completing the most urgent and important tasks in their lives with the same strength as when you try to bring like poles of a magnet together. Have you ever tried? The resistance is unreal and they will never touch. It's also a potentially dangerous force causing victims to fail out of school, perform poorly at work, put off medical treatment, or delay saving for retirement. A case Western Reserve University study from 1997 found that the college age procrastinators ended up with higher stress, more illness, and lower grades by the end of the semester. Now, that wasn't my story. I kept straight A's, but a lot of things fell by the wayside. It was like, not good. I mean, and to be fair, here, here was the biggest, the worst part. While I aced everything and people thought I was brilliant, I didn't retain any of the stuff I aced. Like I was so stressed that I didn't absorb the knowledge. It meant nothing to me at the end. So sad. Okay, which is why I only did one year of my doctorate. Because I was accidentally going in the exact same direction and had to pull back. Okay, but the reason people procrastinate are not understood that well. Some researchers viewed procrastination largely as a failure of self-regulation, like the inability to discipline yourself. Like other bad behaviors that have to do with a lack of self-control, such as overeating, <laughs> a gambling problem, or overspending. Others say it's not a matter of being lazy or poor time management, as many smart overachievers who procrastinate often can attest. They say it may actually be linked to how our brain works and how and to deeper perceptions of time and self. I will tell you, like before we even get into the brilliance of this article, for me, it's fear. It's fear-based. Like I, okay, I actually set myself up with so much anxiety to get it done that I think, and, and this is pretending that, let's pretend that I'm totally outside of myself and I'm evaluating this girl that I know fairly well <laughs> and what I've observed about her, okay? So for me, it's like, if I set myself up, knowing that ultimately I didn't do all that I could or my best, then there's not as much risk if I don't get the score because I can say, well, of course I didn't. I mean, I didn't really put enough time into it. Like that kind of thing. I think there's a game right there, but let's see what they have to say. I would love to blame it on a miswired brain. 
I would love that. Okay, so how exactly does procrastination work and how do you stop it? I definitely need to stop it or seriously reduce it. <laughs> Psychological research, comics, and The Simpsons, what? We'll explain. Oh, I know The Simpsons, we all do after 30 years, but I don't favor them per se. Okay, the real origins of procrastination. Most psychologists see procrastination as a kind of avoidance behavior, a coping mechanism gone awry, in which people give in to feel good, says Timothy Cycle, a professor who studies procrastination at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. It usually happens when people fear or dread or have anxiety about the important task awaiting them. That's straight up for me. That's straight up for me. They open a video game or Pinterest instead. Yeah, I feel really bad because my husband's like, you were in there all night. Did you get everything done? I was in there all night, but I wasn't like doing what I said I would do. Uh, don't watch this video, Dale. Don't watch this video. Okay, that makes them feel better temporarily, but unfortunately, reality comes back to bite them in the end. Once the reality of a deadline sets in again, procrastinators feel more extreme shame and guilt. But for an extreme procrastinator, those negative feelings can be just another reason to put the task off, with the behavior turning into a vicious, self-deflating cycle. Um, you know, that's... I do ultimately get it done. I'm one of those girls who absolutely has to meet that deadline. But again, I don't do it in a very healthy way. Okay. Tim Urban, who runs the blog, Wait, But Why?, created an amazing and funny explanation of what may happen inside the brain of a procrastinator. Urban calls himself a master procrastinator. I'd like to take that guy down. I'm really good. <laughs> He didn't begin writing a 90-page senior thesis until 72 hours before it was due. That I understand. Urban recently gave a TED Talk about his own extreme procrastination tendencies in which he used some of his own cartoons to explain how life is different for an extreme procrastinator. And there's a hyperlink for that. And of course, I'll include this in the description of the video. And I should definitely click on that link. But not tonight. Because I have other important things to do. First, he describes the brain of a non-procrastinator in which a rational decision maker has a firm grip on the wheel. So here's the rational guy and he's got his little wheel like, you know, on a ship. And it says, I do things that make sense. I think long term. I am not a child. Okay. The brain of a procrastinator looks similar except for the presence of a little friend, which Urban labels the instant gratification monkey. <laughs> Is it any coincidence that I have coconut right here? What? Are you my instant gratification monkey on top of everything else? Aw, but you're so innocent, coconut. <laughs> Okay, that's brilliant. Okay, so here's the procrastinator's brain. It still has a rational decision maker at the wheel, but it has an instant gratification monkey going, hoo, 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 right? And then it says, I have the same purpose as the guy in the above drawing. We are the same. Minus this little person. Okay, I can get into this. The monkey seems as though he will be fun. But in fact, he's a lot of trouble, as Urban's comics illustrate. This is a perfect time to get some work done. <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay, so Coconut, welcome back, my friend. We haven't talked in a while, but apparently you've still been causing trouble. Okay, then it says, let's watch a bunch of YouTube videos on creatures of the deep sea and then go on YouTube spiral that makes us... Uh, through Richard Fenman talking about string theory and ends with us watching interviews with Justin Bieber's mom. <laughs> and of course today, this is obviously a little older, but today it would be TikTok, the endless TikTok reels. And they're only 15 seconds each, so what's the big deal until five hours passes, right? Okay, so then it says, then we'll organize our to-do list, check sock prices on Amazon, split up, our iPhone albums into smaller, more specific albums. God, this is just so true. By then, it'll be two. And we have an appointment at 4.30, so it'll be too late to really start any work at that point. And then, of course, the reasonable brain is saying, but... Ugh, I so get that. This continues in 
till things get really bad. The prospect of the end of your career or your schooling looms. Then something that Irvin calls the panic monster kicks in and finally spurs you into action. This is so me. Ah, panic monster. Ah, monkey. Ah, reasonable brain. <laughs> okay, I so get it. Ah, and it just keeps going. And, and it's so true. People can be various kinds of procrastinators. Urban says some procrastinate by doing useless things, such as searching for cat gifts. GIFs, right? Um, others actually accomplish things like cleaning their home, working their boring jobs, but never quite getting to the things they really want to accomplish in life, their most important long-term goals. To illustrate this, Urban uses a concept that is known as the Eisenhower Matrix, a graphic that was included in the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's named after Dwight D. Eisenhower, the famously productive president. Eisenhower thought that people should spend their time on what was truly important to them, the tasks in quadrants one and two below. This may be, let's go ahead and make this the icon for the video. Uh, it looks like a good one. Okay, so, and again, you'll see this because not only is it the, the uh, image, but I've included this in the description. So at the top is urgent and not urgent. And then down the side is important and not important. So quadrant one is not only urgent, but important. Like my report cards, like getting ready for my observation. Okay, quadrant two is not urgent, but it's still important. Okay, then finally quadrant three is not urgent. I'm sorry, it's urgent, but it's not important. And quadrant four is not important and not urgent. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, most procrastinators spend little time in those quadrants. Instead, they mostly hang out in quadrant three and quadrant four, doing things that may be urgent but are not important. Occasionally, when the panic monster takes over, they take a very brief detour to quadrant one. That's me. The procrastinator's matrix. Okay, so this is the one for procrastinators. It's urgent and important. Do when it goes from urgent to appallingly dire. That's when they finally act on it. <laughs> Not urgent and important. They delegate to the future you. Urgent but not important. They do when quadrant one is urgent, meaning it's totally out of order. I so get that. And not urgent and not important. They do it now. And maybe also just do it forever. They never work to the other things. That cannot be my story, people. That cannot be my story. I have got to get on with what matters. Urban says this habit is disastrous because the road to a procrastinator's dreams, the road to expanding his horizons, exploring his true potential, achieving work he's truly proud of, runs directly through quadrant two. Quadrant one and quadrant three may be where people survive, but quadrant two is where people thrive, grow, and blossom. Yes, please. This is Urban's own personal explanation of how and why he procrastinates, but his account actually corresponds with psychological research on the topic. Cycle discusses the idea of the monkey mind. Oh, monkey mind. You know, I've given you a lot of credit for being quiet, but you are secretly devastating me. <laughs> and yet, your name's Coconut, which is vegan, and I love you. Okay, that our thoughts are constantly darting all over the place, preventing us from concentrating. Now, this is a big thing. You know how they go through stuff? Like a second ago, every kid was ADHD. Now every adult is, right? I have ADHD. Am I saying that right? Hyper just hyperactivity disorder. Wait. Anyway, is it ADHD? Anyway, suddenly adults all have that too, right? Hi. Our diet is robbing our brain of all cells. So that's ridiculous right there. Social media and the amount of influx from all of the messages we're receiving every day on everything from phones to TVs to billboards that are now electronic is also frying us. So it doesn't mean that everybody has a disorder, right? Okay, that our thoughts are constantly darting all over the place, preventing us from concentrating. And psychologists agree that the problem with procrastinators is that they are tempted to give in to the instant gratification. 
hi, I majored in instant gratification, right? I mean, that's the whole food problem where I just want to solve it right now instead of like actually going through the steps and going through the emotions. It's just like, how can I appease myself in this moment? It's that they're tempted to give an instant gratification, which brings people the kind of instant relief psychologists call hidden hedonic pleasure. I know it's hedonistic, but hedonic pleasure rather than staying focused on the long-term goal. So get it. Important goals, the kind that occupy the first and second quadrants of love are more challenging, but in the long run, bring longer lasting feelings of well-being and self-satisfaction that psychologists call eduomonic pleasure. Okay. Present Homer versus future Homer. This is the reference to The Simpsons. Psychologists have some other fascinating models to understand the forces behind procrastination. Some believe that procrastination is so intractable because it's linked to deeper perceptions of time and the difference between what they call the present and future self. I totally understand the need to be living in the present. There's no doubt. Okay, so the idea is that even though we know that the person we will be in the in a month is theoretically the same person that we are today, we have little concern, understanding, or empathy for that future self. People are far more focused on how they feel today. And of course, today builds tomorrow, so it's really important to see the big picture all the time, right? And by you, I mean me. You know, cycle points to a clip from the Simpsons as a pretty good illustration of the different ways we think about our present and future selves. In one episode, Marge scolds her husband for not spending enough time with the kids. Someday, these kids will be out of the house and you'll regret not spending more time with them, she says. That's a problem for future Homer. <laughs> Man, I don't envy that guy, Homer says while pouring vodka into a mayonnaise jar and then downing the concoction before collapsing on the floor. When making long-term decisions, people tend to fundamentally feel a lack of emotional connection to their future selves, says Hal, a psychologist at the UCLA Anderson School of Management, who studies the present and future self. So even though I know on some fundamental level in a year's time, I'll still be me, in some ways, I treat that future self as if he's a fundamentally different person and as if he's not going to benefit or suffer from the consequences of my actions today. Yeah, I owe this current self an apology <laughs> from 10 months ago when I started abusing my body again with food and lack of exercise and everything else because now I'm walking in it. I often think if people, because I do this all the day, I'm like I'm a people watcher. So all day long, I'm looking at people going, you're wearing your story. And I am wearing my story. Like in this moment, like anybody who knows, they would just know, huh? Okay. Talk for another day. Hirschfeld's research supports the idea He's taken an MRI scan of people's brains as they thought about themselves in the present, a celebrity like Natalie Portman or Matt Damon, and then themselves in the future. He found that people process information about their present and future selves with different parts of the brain. I love that. Their brain activity when describing their self in a decade was similar to when they were describing Natalie Portman. Emily Pronin of Princeton University uh, led a study with somewhat similar findings in 2008. She presented people with a nasty concoction of soy sauce and ketchup and had them decide how much they or another person would have to drink. Some people choose for themselves, others chose for other people, and a third group chose for themselves in two weeks. The study showed that people were willing to commit to drinking a half cup of the nasty concoction in the future, but committed to only two tablespoons that day. Duh. <laughs> Who wouldn't pretend that it'll happen in the future? Anything to get away from today. So Cycle's latest research suggests that those who are in more, more in touch with their future selves, both two months and even 10 years down the line, reported fewer procrastination behaviors. However, research also suggests that the procrastinators might be able to get more in touch with their future selves, a change that can help them make them happier in the long run. Super interesting that this came up because I was literally thinking of this today. Um, my husband's birthday is on Tuesday. God bless him. And we went ahead and went out today because, you know, the week gets away from us. Uh, but while I was out, 
I was thinking, uh, like I like to live in the present for sure, but I was thinking if I considered our five or 10 year plan, what would it take, you know, to have to build that and, and to believe in it. And, and I thought, um, because I do want to be healthy and take care of myself and lose weight. I was thinking, I don't even need to put pictures of stars and stuff. I have beautiful pictures of me. And that's a big one. If you follow me, you know that's hard for me to say. But I really did see some really healthy, beautiful pictures of me. You know, I mean, one, certainly when I was only 17 years old. But another one, um, you know, just like eight years ago, where I really had the body that I want. Um, and certainly when my face is healthy and, and radiant, which I have photos of, and I thought, wouldn't it be so brilliant if I put pictures of me and made that my hope since I know what my potential is. But anyway, it was just a flash and I, I took a moment with it and it was pretty amazing. Okay. Um, in one study, some subjects used virtual reality to look at digitally aged photographs of themselves. Then all of the test subjects were asked how they would spend $1,000. Those who saw the aged photo chose to invest twice as much in retirement accounts as those who hadn't. So interesting. Interestingly, insurance companies have latched onto these findings to try to drum up more business. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, they launched a service called Phase Retirement, in which you can upload a photo of yourself and see it digitally aged. Uh, Lons created a similar tool with the help of his own team of behavioral scientists. That's a hard no. First of all, we can reverse what we're going to look like in 10 years. We already know that. You go plant-based, you go vegan, you go raw vegan. You will be younger in 10 years, not older. So that's a hard no for me. How to return to the land of productive. That's my goal. Bring it in, Jules. Oh, return to the land of productive, which I need to do in like two seconds flat. I already told myself I can play with you guys till nine o'clock. That's 13 minutes, but that includes an upload, download, and post. <laughs> So see, I was thinking, I was thinking, and then I'll get onto the homework, which I've been calculating. You know, I'm never just sitting there. My husband will say, are you doing your homework? And I'll say, yeah. And he's like, how? In my head. I do it in my head first, which is why I can pre-think of my success in the future now. Okay, so it's not all a waste. All right, beyond trying to be kinder to our future selves, what else can people do about procrastination? Tim Urban points out that the typical advice for procrastinators, essentially to stop why they're doing, stop what they're doing and get down to work is ridiculous. I love it because procrastination isn't something that extreme procrastinators feel as though they can control. I'm not saying I can't control it, but you can hear my excuses. I already said, while all those other things need to be done, they don't need to be done right now, and they don't need to be done in the order that I'm doing them. So, right? Okay, while we're here, let's make sure obese people avoid overeating, depressed people avoid apathy, and someone please tell beached whales that they should avoid being out of the ocean. <laughs> He's just saying how incredibly ridiculous that statement is. It's not enough to just tell a procrastinator, stop procrastinating, an alcoholic, stop drinking, like we know. It's way bigger than that, or they would have stopped anyway. It's miserable, right? Okay, but there's some simple tips. Those who study the subject say that can help procrastinators get down to business. Interestingly, research suggests that one of the most effective things that procrastinators can do is to forgive themselves for procrastinating. Juliana, I forgive you. <laughs> Hold on. I forgive you for wasting so much time. I mean, isn't procrastination just wasting time? Or, or is it effectively spending time elsewhere? And there's good ways to say it. Uh, for procrastinating. In a study by Cycle and others, students who reported forgiving themselves for procrastinating on studying for an exam ended up procrastinating less for the second exam. Oh, it's an interesting thought. I'm so sorry that you uh, neglected to do what you had to do until now. Will you do better next time? <sighs> Not yet. <laughs> Dear future self, I pray you do better. Current self, no. <laughs>
This works because procrastination is linked to negative feelings, the researchers say. Forgiving yourself can reduce the guilt you feel about procrastinating, which is one of the main triggers for procrastinating in the first place. Okay, that's just not true for me. It's not guilt. It's fear. It's fear that I'm going to fail anyway, so like, why bother? It's one of those. And um, I'm not sorry for what I did separate from now. I'm only sorry when someone on the outside notices. Uh, only when somebody brings it to my attention. Then I'm like, Okay, then I feel bad. Up until then, I'm like cruising, man. I do feel a little bad for my husband, though, for real. Because if I was on task and getting it all done, we could be spending more time together right now. Fair enough. Okay, the best thing the cycle recommends is to recognize that you don't have to be in the mood to do certain tasks. Just ignore how you feel and get started. Okay, I love that. Let me read that again. <sighs> You don't have to be in the mood to do certain tasks. Just ignore how you feel and get started. That's so true. Like earlier, I could have started earlier today, but I talked myself out of it, you know? And I, and if I had just, I find that once I sit down and get going, I'm engaged. I love it. I am gun ho It all comes to me. I'm super excited about it, but I have to get started. Okay, most of us seem to tactically believe that our emotional state has to match the task at hand, but that's just not true. I have to recognize that I'm really going to feel like it, and it doesn't matter if I don't feel like it. Okay, you know this goes right down to eating right. This goes right down to exercising every day. What did Tanny Roll always say? Don't wait to want to exercise. Exercise until you want to. I know I'm saying that wrong, but it's something like that, right? Uh, you know... This was me. My taste buds were so off that when I started to really get back into eating right and eating raw, I had to just keep telling myself, hi, no wonder your taste buds can't taste what this feels like. No wonder this isn't as exciting and vibrant of food as you want. You have to earn those taste buds back so that they can taste the subtleties in the food. So I do get this and it always comes back to my food. Sorry, there's something right here seriously bugging me. Okay. Instead of focusing on feelings, we have to think about what the next action is. He counsels people to break down their task into very small steps that can actually be accomplished. Yeah, into clusters. I get that. So if it's something like writing a letter of reference, the first step is just opening the letterhead and writing the date. Got that. I so get that. And I'm a writer. I'm totally a writer by nature. And I get that. Like even for that lesson plan, I've set it up. I have the template ready. I have to fill it all in, but I got this part down. Even if it's an extremely small action, a little progress will typically make you feel better about the task and increase your self-esteem, which in turn reduces the desire to procrastinate to make yourself feel better, he says. Psycho believes that teachers and parents should teach kids to deal with the temptation of procrastination from a young age. A lot of teachers think that kids have time management problems. Yeah when they procrastinate and they don't have a time management problem what they have is an emotion management problem word word i so get that they have to learn that you don't feel good all the time and you've got to get on with it i so get that mark twain is quoted as saying if your job is to eat a frog eat it first thing in the morning and if your job is to eat two frogs eat the big one first <laughs> Okay, I don't support eating animals, but that is brilliant. Okay, let's go back. If your job is to eat a frog, eat it first thing in the morning. Just get it done. And if it's to eat two frogs, just get the bigger one out of the way. Okay, I love that. Urban basically says the same thing in a different language. No one builds a house. They lay one brick again and again, and the end result is a house. Procrastinators are great visionaries. They love to fantasize about the beautiful mansion they will one day have built. But what they need to be are gritty construction workers who methodically lay one brick after the other, day after day, without giving up until a house is built. I love that. I totally love that. Okay. I don't know if this gave us all the answers. I don't know if you benefited from it, but it gave me a lot to think about. I think I'll sit here and think about it and not do anything I'm supposed to. <laughs> I mean, seriously, 
Uh, maybe I should read the next 10 articles and watch the next two videos about procrastinating instead of getting done what I have to. Oh, people, that is the dis-ease, I'm telling you. Uh, anyway, super interesting. Um, I may have to do another video on procrastinating, but this is just one that I needed to hear. I hope it benefited you to hear it. And I still have my time. I'm at the five minute mark. Let's do this, Jules. I've got a goal. And I'm going to visit Coconut a little bit more because Koki, I think you've been causing trouble. Because you're so innocent and cute. Mwah. Okay. Like if you like, join us if you haven't subscribed. Let me know in the comments below how I may support you. And until we talk again, best of all, you can choose not to procrastinate. And therefore, you're blessed. And by you, I mean me.